I'd like to thank the organizers of the conference so much for inviting me to come speak. And today I'll be talking about my dissertation research that's looking at how we can model processions within the ancient city. So processions were used across the Roman world to um, rely a variety of different messages. These range from political statements of power, such as what we'd get with the Roman triumph, to other displays of spectacle, um, like funerary processions. But our understanding of these processions are very limited. We have to rely almost exclusively on literary sources, which are fragmented in their descriptions of these events, as well as the iconographic record. And so as a result, we know most about processions that occurred within the city of Rome, but beyond that, we don't know how they were taken to other places outside of Rome, throughout the empire, or the mechanisms in which they actually traverse these spaces. A lot of this has to do with some of the assumptions that scholars have actually approached studies of processions. It's this idea that every cult or festival had processions that occurred regularly throughout the year, but scholars don't really go beyond this. We know about the triumphal and the funerary processions and the circus processions which occurred in the city of Rome, but other forms are not commented upon. Um, in many instances, what we get in literary sources are vague descriptions to the idea of a procession occurring, which focuses on this idea of movement. So here we have just a passage from Dio commenting that a boy fell down while carrying a victory in procession such as the soldiers hold. That tells us nothing about what procession is this deity to? Is it to Mithras? Is it to someone else? Where did it start? Where, does, where is it ending? What are the other functions? We just know that something's happening. So this is kind of how scholars have approached this issue, that it occurred, but we don't look closer. And when we start looking at individual towns and the possibility that processional activity occurred within them, we go to examples of a likely route having been a processional route. So such as examples like at Falari Novi, we have this main central road that goes through the city. They comment on this was likely used for processions. And this in conjunction with uh, quite a few temples that are spaced along this route, tends to maybe justify that this was a processional route, but was that the only place that the processions went along this one road? Probably not, but this has really colored the way that people have approached this topic. When trying to look at more the archaeology of processions, um, it's difficult to see how processions can actually be studied. There is limited evidence, as I've said, concerning their evidence within literary and iconographic sources, but also they were transient events. They were not physically recorded within the archeological record. Most of the instances occur when you have a dedication of a monumental arch or a temple commemorating a specific event. But this is a one-time occurrence and it doesn't happen for every procession. And it still doesn't give us any information about how they moved through the cityscape. In some instances, we have examples such as at Ephesus, a decree that's written on a stone tablet that was posted in the city saying that this procession is dedicated to the city. It's going to have this number of statues carried in procession from the temple of Artemis going past these temples and the theater through this gate and ending back at the temple of Artemis. But instances like this are extremely rare examples. And even in this case, it tells us some of the monuments in which the procession would pass by, but it still doesn't explain the exact route. And mo all of the research that's been done into examples such as this, or even the processions taking place in Rome, are trying to reconstruct the exact route. But this isn't really taking into consideration of other factors that would have affected the movement and where these routes would have gone into the cityscape. What about the people involved? Why would you take one street over another as you move through the city? This just isn't addressed. So this is kind of where my research falls in to try to answer some of these questions of what is the best methodology to model and visualize processions and do and in doing so, 
how far might processions have played an active role in defining both the social and religious practices at a city level? So how can we take the study of processional movement and ritual practices within the city and move it to understanding how did it impact the people that actually participated in these various cults that had processions? And how does that therefore affect kind of the ritual dynamics, religious dynamics within the cityscape? In order to do this, I'm looking specifically at Ostia Antica out of, outside of Rome. It's about 25 kilometers southwest of Rome and was Rome's ancient port town, also two kilometers south of Portus. It has a very long period of occupation dating to about the 7th century BC, archaeological evidence put it, putting it at the 4th century, and it was in use until late antiquity. While it's most well known for its commercial development, which really began, began in about the 1st century BC, we know especially the monuments such as the monumental warehouses or the multi-story apartments that, Ost that survive at Ostia, it still has a very rich religious environment, which caters to the study of how is religion disseminated across the city from a specific temple and how can we study the processions that help this dissemination. So to begin with, what evidence do we have that processions even occurred at Ostia? Unfortunately, very little. We have no literary sources commenting on processional activity at Ostia. We have a couple wall paintings depicting possible processions. Um, at the top, you can see the Navigium Acetus. This was what would have occurred in March with the Festival of Isis for opening of the sailing season and would have had a procession to launch a ritual ship. And here you can see it's a little difficult, but two figures are drawing a cart back after having launched the ship. And then down below, we have another painting that shows the Feast of Diana and then also Vendemia. This um, Vendemia was the festival for the wines and the harvest, so processions associated with this. But these have to be realized within their context. They were probably part of a larger iconographic calendar. So they're not depicting individual events that occurred in Ostia, but more some of the ritual activities that might have been associated with these events. But in looking in combination of the existing cults that existed at Ostia and the identified temples with our, the known ritual activity that occurred across the empire in relation to these cults, we can begin to um, create a hypothesis of what types of cults would have had processional activity and then moving from there to how can we actually study this movement within Ostia. In terms of previous processional studies at Ostia, there's very little. We have Janet Delane's comment on a possible archaic sacred route that went from the entrance gate of the Lavinium through the city, ending at the harbor of Ostia. And this is primarily based on passing several sanctuaries that were along this route. Otherwise, the main commentary on processions occurring at Ostia and scholarship is that the Decamanus, the main street of Ostia, likely hosted processions. But it doesn't go beyond that. It doesn't question why would it have gone on the Decamanus? Did it start and end there? Or did it go other places throughout the city? And if that's the case, where did it go? And how does that give us further insight into Ostia's religious environment? So that's kind of the starting point for my research, but we have to build upon what movement research has already been, been done in the ancient city. And unlike um, what we've been looking at previously today of these large cost transport plans, the same hasn't been applied on a city scale to the same extent. Um, a lot of the movement studies within Ostia, Pompeii, have focused on where can we identify the potential of movement, looking at street ruts, blockades, arches, things that constrict and confine where movement actually went. So, and this usually indicates these are the major streets, but processions didn't abide by all of these factors, besides the fact that processions were usually on foot, not by carts, but also at Ostia, we don't have all of the same degree of surviving evidence. 
the streets of Ostia, due to excavations, were completely reconstructed. You have real ruts going the wrong directions. So we can't rely on that to look at where were movement directions within the city. Another methodology needs to be applied. Space syntax has been used to try to look at what's the integration of streets to see how does that tell us where people might have gone. This is great for telling us what are the most important streets in the city. We have Hannah Stoger's work looking at the relative integration and it can basically confirms that, yes, the De Decumanus was probably the most important and most integrated street, and we have all of these other subsidiary streets that are secondary and tertiary in importance, but that doesn't relate to where would a procession have moved within this. Similarly, Alan Kaiser looking at Austrian street depth, this is taking a point from the city gates and looking at what's the relative integration of streets based off of the number of turns you need to access to get to an individual street. And he does that for the entirety of the street network. But once again, that's limited to the streets itself. It doesn't take into account the structures and the buildings surrounding this and other factors that might have impacted movement. So in trying to build and move beyond this, um, I'm very much taking to heart kind of graphs um, analysis of a procession that it's not just a journey from A to B, but it matters where A and B are located and who's doing the journey. So this means that we need to put processions within the context of why are they occurring, where are they occurring, what are they associated with, and what can we then study in relation to that and how can we then formulate possible areas of movement associated with it to gain a better understanding of its larger ritual context. And in order to do this, I'm applying a network analysis based approach to look at movement potential. So areas within Ostia that facilitated movement from a specific temple to try to question what factors actually affected where a procession went. Um, so starting with, I had to digitize a map of Ostia because there's no existing one in use for scholars. So this was done based off of using the Alante di Ostia Antica and the Scavi di Ostia plans. And, um, because the entire site's been excavated, this plan here represents the entirety of Ostia's history as we know it. But um, this isn't appropriate for then looking at processions because it's tied to the city's street network. I had to decide on a temporal framework, so I'm choosing the late second century AD. This is one of the most well-identified periods in Ostia's history in terms of the existing buildings and architecture, their functions, but is also Ostia's street network, which is critical to understanding where did processional movement go? It had to have gone on the existing streets, but we have to understand what streets were in existence during the processions we're looking at in relation to the buildings. And then um, I needed to determine what variables am I actually looking at for trying to construct a model of processional movement. This is based on the street network, urban activity, which I'm tying to building function as in the activities that were occurring within the buildings, giving an indication to affecting possibly where movement would have gone. And further variables that I haven't taken into account yet, but will be coming later on in my research is looking at the visibility of processions, both from the participants, but also the spectators, and also crowds and crowd densities within the streets. So to start with, um, I had to basically classify every single second century building within Ostia. And I've broken this up into four categories. So looking at social spaces, which you can see is the kind of the light blue. And these are things like fountains, porticos, where people would have gathered, also baths, more public areas. And then you have the religious spaces, um, monumental temples. I'm not going into any of the domestic religion because that's all within side houses and not directly accessible from the street. 
and then we have domestic spaces and then commercial spaces. And within each of these categories, I have further subdivided it. So within commercial, you get things like shops, warehouses, and these will, will all be taken into account at a later stage in my modeling um, for what's the factor if you want to go past the most number of shops, but not the most number of warehouses. And then actually constructing the network, I've then created a network based off of the streets of Ostia, and then the nodes correspond to the individual buildings, and these are then placed on the street network to correspond, and they're in alignment with the primary entrance door for each building where, where possible. In some instances, this does become complicated when you have multiple streets all entering to the same building of determining which was the primary entrance because this does affect the network outcome. But um, what's kind of nice about this model is that you can play around with that and see how the network changes based off of where these nodes are placed. And then I'm calculating between the centrality of these different nodes. And this really shows us the probability of movement going through two nodes within the system. And so um, this idea of movement potential and looking for what areas had a higher movement potential when trying to, when looking at um, a network of commercial spaces or religious spaces. <coughs> And so this gives us kind of an indication of where might movement have been going opposed to just looking at what's the spatial um, kind of display of all of these types of spaces within Ostia. So I've been doing this within um, GIS and here you can see the, wait, oh, sorry. Um, and I'm using the urban network analysis toolbox within GIS because it's, since I'm looking at processional movement within the city, it's important to maintain the metric distance of the network. Um, and I'm trying to see how this toolbox actually works. Um, a further step I need to take is to see, is this the same as trying to export the data into another um, framework to see if the results are the same. But because what I'm doing is based within GIS, at the moment, it seems the easiest, if it is successful, to try to do all of the calculations within it and build upon that in later analyses that I'll be undertaking. So here we can see an example of the between the centrality of just the religious spaces. And it's color coded here. You can see red has the highest betweenness located here, here, and down here. And the greens are the lowest between a centrality, so showing that these seem to be, in comparison to just the religious spaces, the highest area of movement potential. And at the moment, none of this is weighted, but I will be playing around with, if you weight different spaces, how do these results change? And then taking these betweenness measurements and applying kernel density analysis as another way to visualize areas of potential movement. Or, and so in this, and on the left, you can see just the um, kernel density of the religious spaces. And then you can see how it changes with the betweenness measurements. So this just gives us another form of visualization. And here we can see an example of betweenness of the shops as well. And so what are some of the next steps? As I'm still in the midst of doing all of this modeling, I don't have any maps to show about where the routes are, but what I will be doing is taking these between the centrality measurements and KD um, kernel density measurements to then have those as nodes to play into cost distance analysis. So looking at um, a lot of different iterations of scenarios. If you want to go on a route from a specific temple that goes past 70% of shops and 30% of domestic spaces, what are the potential routes? And doing all of these various iterations to then see what patterns actually arise. And based off of this, can we tell anything about the religious environment? Are there certain routes that are more possible than not? And, and in this case, we have to go back to the archaeological record and the specific temples and cults that we are studying to take into account, was it a large procession that would have gone through the entire cityscape, or was it something that was confined more to a neighborhood? And how does that affect where the route would have gone? <coughs> 
So this is basically a way to try to look at how can we re model religious movement within the ancient city as a way to look at what's the larger dissemination of a specific cult across the cityscape. Thank you.